Hi guys, welcome to Nomenclature Made Easy Part 2. If you haven't checked Part 1 out, then you can click in the cards over here. Yeah, over here. And uh, so we're going to be going over three harder problems than last time. So again, if you haven't, sorry, if you haven't looked at the first one, do those first because they're definitely easier. And we explain those. Um, so if you look at these three, you can click pause and then we'll come back and show you the answer. Alright, welcome back. Hopefully you got the three answers for these. If not, we're going to go over them right now. So starting with number five, it's non-46-diene-238-trione. And so first we want to look at the parent group, which is non, which means nine. So I'm going to draw that. And you might notice that there's a ion right here, which is a triple bond, which means the shape of our structure might change a little bit, but I'm still going to draw the nine carbons to begin with. So one carbon, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'll label them quickly. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got one, nine. And so nine carbons in your parent chain. And so from left to right, we're gonna go four, six, diene. And so four and six are gonna be special, so carbon four and six are gonna have a triple bond. So ene for the alkyne, and there's gonna be two of them, so di. And so whenever you see four and six, the triple bond's gonna be starting at four and going to five, and starting at six and going to seven. So if we just added this here, it would look like this, and right here again. But we know that triple bonds have to be straight because of the rigid structure and SP hybridization. And so I'm actually gonna redraw this carefully. Just this middle part. So I know I have carbon three and carbon eight here. And so three uh, four can be bent, but then four to five has to be straight. And so 5 and 6 also has to be straight due to the SP hybridization. So we're going to draw 5 to 6. And then we know 6 to 7 also has a triple bond. Like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this higher. And so 7 to 8 also has to be straight because of the same hybridization. So 8. And then finally 9 can be bent. And so it's kind of tricky to have to redraw the structure, but just know that triple bond means it has to be straight as well as the adjacent ones. And so moving along, we have 2, 3, 8, so these are all going to be special. Try own, and the own is like a ketone. So on 2, 3, and 8, we're going to have a ketone. So all we have to do is add in on 2, ketone, 3, ketone, and 8, ketone. And yeah, so this is the answer for this problem. Hopefully you got, if you got, hopefully you got that correct. If not, then hopefully the explanation helped. And so Frank's going to hand the camera to me, and he's actually going to go over problem 6. Okay, so problem six, by the way, great job, and then uh, just want to clarify, like you said, uh, triple bonds have to be straight, but the atoms immediately next door also have to be straight, but then afterwards you can bend afterwards. Okay, so this one, four amino, seven amino carbonyl, four formal, seven oxo, hepta two five dienoic acid. All right, so carbon four special, it has an amino group, carbon seven special, it has an amino carbonyl group, which is kind of weird, but this is a... A mid, actually. It's an amid branch. And four, formal. Formal, kind of like formaldehyde, if you ever heard of it. It is what we use to say we have an aldehyde branch coming off. And then seven oxo, you might not have heard of it either, but oxo is for ketone. So we have a ketone coming off carbon seven, and that's why that carbon seven is special. Yep, yeah? okay. So our parent chain is right here, hepta. And hepta is seven. So we are going to have a seven-member chain, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then two and five, we have dienes, so two, we have an alkene, starting at two, one, two, three, four, five, ene, so alkene, and then oic acid, meaning we have a carboxylic acid. Now we don't have two, because if we did, it would say diene dioic acid. Because there's no di here, it means that we only have one carboxylic acid, and that's at carbon one, the starting part of the chain. So you throw in your carbonyl, pop in your OH, and that's your carboxylic acid. All right? So we got that down, 2,5-diene, and then let's go back to the beginning. Four amino, so we have a amine group, so NH2. 
I know it's NH2 because I don't have any ends here in the beginning telling me that I have uh, substituents branching off my N group. So it's just, it's just NH2, um, seven amino carbonyl, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven has an amino carbonyl branch coming off of it, and what that is, is you draw a carbon for the branch, and then the carbonyl actually comes in first, and then comes the amino part, because that's how you fit in a, a mid into your molecule. So anytime you see amino carbonyl, remember, carbonyl comes in first, and it's a branch off. So if it was six amino carbonyl, I would draw a branch coming off, and then a carbonyl, and then NH2. All right, so we got that down for formal. So we have an aldehyde group coming up here. So one, same thing, bond first, and then aldehyde. This is not the aldehyde carbon, but this is. And then seven oxo. So for ketones, they're a little bit different. Ketones, they are exactly at where the atom, or the number is. So seven oxo, so the ketones right off of seven. All right, and this should be our structure. Four amino, four amino, four formal, seven amino, whoops. Seven amino carbonyl and hepta two five diene oic acid. All right, so last part, problem seven. Rook, I'm gonna let Lennon handle this. So Frank said, number seven, dipropyl three methoxy carbonyl pent two ene one five dioic. And so, the first thing you want to note uh, before we get to the parent chain is we have dipropyl here, and this doesn't have a number in front of it. Where usually we know the number usually explains where it is attached to. But if we don't have a number here, we know that this is going to be connected to our parent chain of O8, which is an ester of O8. And so with that in mind, we're going to get started. Let's look for the parent chain, it's right here, pent, uh, which is five. So I'm going to go ahead and draw five carbons. So one, two, three, four, five, and I'll label them. Two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to start right here at 3 methoxycarbonyl. And so oxycarbonyl, we have an ester as a substituent. And then meth is going to refer to the chain that is off of that ester. And 3, of course, is going to represent where this ester is attached. And so for 3, we're going to draw uh, a branch with our carbonyl. And we draw the branch first because it is a substituent. So it's okay that we add a carbon here. And so methoxy, we have our ester group and the meth branch is just going to be one off. OK, 2-ene, like an alkene, it's going to be a double bond. So 2-3 two, two, is going to be a double bond here. And then 1-5-dioate. And because this has the highest priority, these esters are going to be part of our parent chain. And so we're going to go ahead and put carbonyl group here with an O. And we need to know what's attached to the other end of this O. So we go all the way back to the beginning, and we see propyl and dipropyl because there's going to be two of them, one and five. And so meth at prop. And then on our carbon number one, we're essentially going to have the same thing. It's meth at And so here's the answer for the last one. If you got all three of these, good job. They're pretty tricky and they're pretty long. But hopefully these explanations of breaking it down really help. OK, so just one more time, I'm going to go over this methoxy carbonyl group. Uh, so this is going to be your ester as a substituent, not as the parent chain. And so you're going to have the ester coming off of the designated carbon. And it kind of goes the same thing, or same way with the amino carbonyl. This is going to be an amide as a substituent, not as a parent chain. And so again, coming off of carbon 7 is our amide group where we draw a dash to the carbonyl and then the amine group to get the full amide as a substituent, not as a parent chain. And so that's the end of the video. If you liked it, you can like it down below. You can subscribe, share it. Uh, if you're looking for the clutch prep code, it expires August 31st, but it is Orgo Meet Easy Dash Pen, E E N. And they have a, a wide range of resources that you can use for pretty much any subject you can think of. And yeah, if you like this, look up for the next one. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Alright, thanks for watching, guys. See you guys in our next video. Bye.